Tensions continue to simmer as viewers express growing frustration over the shallow nature of political debates, while others seem relieved that Nancy Pelosi brushed aside Donald Trump's criticisms. This reflects a deeper, more emotional divide in American society, where meaningful discourse has given way to sharp personal attacks and highly charged rhetoric. I'm sure that you hear from uh, progressive voters, Democratic voters, who say, as I hear from them on social media, um, Dem the, the media made such a big deal out of Joe Biden's uh, alleged cognitive problems. Why don't they talk about Donald Trump's cognitive problems? Well, Donald Trump talked about that just a second ago, and I want to get your reaction. Let's run that clip. They laugh at us all over the world. They're laughing at us. And you know what they're really laughing at? Kamala, because they can't believe that she's going to be president. They can't believe. You talk about cognitive problems. She's got bigger cognitive problems than he has, in my opinion. Donald Trump saying that Kamala Harris has bigger cognitive problems than Joe Biden. Why would you even cover that? This is a person who's not on the level. He is their nominee for president. He is incompetent. Let's not even talk about the silliness of it all and the weirdness of it all and the assault on women that it is. We're not going to talk issues incompetent. The mm -hmm. only thing he did as president, the only thing he did as president when he had the majority was to pass a bill that gave 83, a tax cut that gave 83 of the benefits to the top 1%, adding $2 trillion to the national debt. The worst job creation record of anybody president since Herbert. Hoover. Because of COVID, yeah. Well, it's not because of COVID. We put $3 trillion into the, into the economy mm -hmm. when he was president working with the, uh, and the Congress are working together. We put $3 trillion into the economy. So uh, don't blame it on COVID. And what did he do with COVID? Denial and delay. Responsible for thousands and thousands and thousands of people dying. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to uh, forgive his job record right. because of COVID, make sure you attribute many of those deaths to him as well. Not, not forgiving uh, yeah. anything, just noting, just noting yeah, the country. Incompetent. Let, you know, well, forget you silly and crazy and crooked and all the rest. Incompetent. Let Trump's remarks about Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's cognitive abilities have sparked wider concerns among conservatives. It's not just about Harris and Biden. It raises broader questions about the capability of leaders to uphold conservative values, which emphasize strength and competence. The idea that the current administration's top figures are not mentally equipped to lead resonates with many who believe that their policies have been poorly executed. Trump's warning highlights a deeper fear that the nation is being guided by leaders who may not fully grasp the complexities of governance. In the public's eyes, competence isn't merely about policy. It's also about trust. When leadership appears cognitively fragile, public confidence in decision-making, particularly during crisis, erodes. Effective governance, after all, demands not only sharp intellect, but also moral clarity. Without these traits, anxiety about the country's future intensifies. Pelosi, however, dismissed Trump's critiques with words like weird, silly, and suggested his attacks were part of a broader media spectacle. She implied that the real issue was not the criticism itself, but the media's role in amplifying it. By urging Trump not to bring such comments to the media, Pelosi seemed to be asserting control over the narrative, deflecting from the substance of his claims. Her response, however, could be seen as an attempt to sidestep uncomfortable questions, focusing more on Trump's behavior rather than addressing the concerns about leadership competence. The media, too, plays its part in shaping this discourse, often selectively highlighting certain voices while muting others, based on political leanings. Pelosi's retorts could be interpreted as dismissive, evading a deeper discussion of whether Harris and Biden possess the mental sharpness to govern effectively. By resorting to emotional language and personal labels, Pelosi and the media risk alienating those voters who crave serious, thoughtful dialogue. Instead of seizing the opportunity to engage in a substantive debate on leadership and capability, the conversation devolves into emotionally charged exchanges, leaving behind the core issue. What truly makes a leader competent, and how does cognitive strength influence governance? These essential questions remain unanswered, clouded by the noise of political theater, and leaving many voters feeling disconnected from the discourse.